Hello, welcome to video five. By now, you should know a little bit about the Sugarloaf site that you're gonna be studying on your excursion. Right now, we're gonna have a look at the abiotic and biotic factors that can contribute to the functioning of an ecosystem so that when you're at the Sugarloaf site, you should be able to recognize them. Here are some of the abiotic or non-living factors that influence an ecosystem. Light intensity is the amount of visible light that is present in an area. Depending on where you are standing on the forest floor, the light may vary due to the canopy cover or shrub layer. Air temperature is a measure of how hot or cold the air is. This should be recorded in the forested area rather than in the areas of human impact, such as the track. Aspect refers to the compass direction that the slope of the site is facing. This is important as it influences how much sun the plants are getting and their exposure to different winds. Slope is the angle of the incline at the site. Generally, the steeper the slope, the more potential for erosion to occur. Wind speed is the rate at which air is moving in a particular area and can affect the growth, reproduction and distribution of plants. It is important to remember that the wind speed at ground level is often different at the canopy level. Relative humidity is a measure of how much water vapour is present in the air. Soil temperature is the measure of how hot or cold the soil is. This can affect the germination and other processes in plants. Soil pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of the soil, with the optimal pH for most plants being slightly acidic. Soil moisture is the quantity of water present in the soil and can vary depending on the area you are measuring, with more moisture expected to be around the base of plants. Soil texture is determined by feel and records the amount of clay, sand or silt that is present in the mineral part of the soil. The biotic, or living factors, that affect an ecosystem are many and varied, with living things working both with and against each other in order to survive. Interactions between living things are all at play, even if we can't always see it. But the particular way in which an organism interacts with other living things will depend on whether they are a producer, a first order consumer, a second order consumer, or a decomposer. Hopefully now you can recognise these factors when you're out in the field. In later videos, you are going to be shown how to use various instruments so that you can record these factors while you're at our study site.